What's up, Zox fam? Now, we're going to be getting into a beginner's guide, giving you guys all the baseline things that you're going to need to be able to set your account up to be successful so that you're able to have a smooth transition, collect your resources, and have fun. Now, I know that this update is going to be dropping tonight, so this is for those of you guys that are going to be coming into the game new or you want to start a fresh account. So let's go ahead and jump right into it, and I'm going to overview my account and just kind of give you a generalized idea of what you're going to need and what would make the the most sense for your progression right so we take a look at where i'm at in the story i've cleared all of easy mode um so all of easy mode is done don't worry about star rarity or getting all the stars i should say uh for the difficulties the main thing is clearing them that is the most important thing because you want to make sure that you're following your courses that is by far the most important guideline that you have to be successful right uh now on hard mode i'm on chapter six and then also on purgatory i'm on chapter three now now, what you want to ideally do is, like I said, following your courses. So this is in your missions and your growth plan, recon plan, ritual miracle, sonic miracle, point war, star promotions, infinite miracle. And then once you have desolate lands unlocked, you will then focus on that. But for the most part, the, the primary ones you're going to be focusing is going to be your growth plan, the recon plan, ritual miracle, and then sonic miracle, right? Now with the growth plan, I'm almost done with this. Um, I'm currently needing to push further into 7-16, but I was at a stopping point to where I wanted to make this video for you guys. So I could kind of help those that would be starting out fresh since I am just about almost a week ahead of everybody, right? Now, with that, what you're going to want to make sure that you're doing is, again, isolating and condensing the units that you are investing in. I think that this is one of the biggest things that would either slow your progression or speed up your progression is understanding that you cannot invest in everything in the beginning of the game you have to pick and isolate what you're investing in and that's why uh getting to a stopping point once you accumulate that 100 pulls that's a good point to do those 100 pulls see what you get and then ultimately decide what you're going to continue to invest in and then alternating them out now the biggest thing is is that what i tried to do is for my account clear i tried to utilize units that i know for a fact that people would either typically have um, um, and there's really not too many RNG aspects or factors into you getting these units, right? Now, uh, in terms of the units that we're using, it will either be Liling or Tangshuang, right? Now, that's going to be your beginner special summon that is random. Um, so either one works extremely well. They do have their advantages to disadvantages in different pieces of content now because of their attribute. But either one actually works for the current state of how you're going to be progressing and pushing through the game. Now... One unit that's definitely going to be a must build for every beginner is going to be Drew. I can't get away from him. I mean, the dude is absolutely ridiculous. Um, once you get his resos, which are easy to get once you do those pulls, um, he's going to be a huge, huge factor in being able to execute. So killing three enemies at once and then being able to uh, also restore his HP with each kill that he gets, which is just absolutely insane once you get his Divine Gates unlocked. Um, another unit that some people are always just talking crap about, but he's going to be very, very viable for beginner progression is going to be Q. Uh, Q's definitely going to be super huge for you to to be able to uh, get rid of different missions or complete different missions that might require you to kill a tablet, um, as well as just killing multiple enemies. He sets your enemies up or your allies up for really, really nice damage setups. So super, super huge to have onto your uh, composition. Now, the other unit you'll be using in your process is gonna be Mona. You will use her up until the point of you getting your pulls. And really, I would say you use her up until the point of you getting Death Guard Hay. Um, I actually swapped her off at this point. Um, it's still a viable unit to a degree, but once you get Death Guard Hay, Death Guard Hay just offers a lot more AOE-wise, single target-wise. Um, and of course, with that defense break, it's just really nice. And then with Mona, she kind of doesn't do well in Chronos. She doesn't really do well in the pep because she multi-hits. So it's just a couple of different factors with where you'd really be taking her. Um, but that's that's the primary thing right uh now outside of that you will be also for healing using helena in the very beginning but she is going to be alternated out for chong poo uh chong poo is going to give you that immunity and that's going to help you with sustaining yourself and not only chronos but also early game a pep as well right so that's pretty much the basis of your team now we're going to come back to gear in a moment but i wanted to kind of lay down just the generalized basics of what you need and what your ultimate goal is just for starting out um 
um, so that you're able to accumulate these resources. Now, since I have spent that 100 um, wor hundreds worth of summons, uh, I actually have now back to 27 gold records and about 12,000 uh, Nexus crystals. I dropped all the way down to zero gold records and three uh, 3K Nexus crystals when I did those pools. So I did accumulate quite a bit uh, considering that I had already had got so much, right? Now, the biggest thing is, is that what is going to be a huge, huge progression push for you is obviously going to be Ritual Miracle outside of story, right? Now, I would say the point at where you would start probably farming or doing some multi-battle stages, and there's a reason why you want to start doing multi-battle and not Blitz, because Blitz, it's absolutely not worth to waste those on stages this early in the game, especially if you have the time to allow it to multi-battle, because that resource is, again, if it's the daily ones, you might want to use those at some point, but you'd rather use those closer to them expiring so that you could be using those on stages that you don't want to or have to sit through so you can simultaneously get the rewards that you want uh, but your primary focuses are going to definitely be chronos and a pep um, i would definitely say once you get to the point of getting to about stage five uh, stage five is going to be a point where you're going to probably want to turn on that multi-battle so that you can start farming 25 through 30 pieces now you're probably only going to have to do maybe collectively somewhere around 30 runs um, and it might be a little bit more but not really really too crazy because you don't want to invest or spend too much time into these dungeons uh, because you just want to be progressing but this is going to be a good point for you to start getting pieces that are going to have better base stats start giving you better sub stats um, and as well like when you're looking at the door that is kind of open um, once you get from or once you go from stage three to four that's when you actually start seeing uh, two star sets um, like in the other two star sets and as well as an increase in the quality of the pieces so once you go to stage five uh, you also will have the capability of leveling up your gear pieces a little bit more So that's why stage five is a little bit more important um, Because once you get to stage six stage six is where you're gonna really have to start taking into consideration more of the mechanics They start to kind of hit you with those things in like stage five But stage six you have to be very very aware of the mechanics and this is where you really start to see your actual team that you potentially want to use start kind of coming into fruition right uh and same thing with a pep you're going to do this a little bit um especially i would say stage five is a really really good place for that multi-battle so that you can accumulate some of those pieces to fill out or further flesh out your characters right now um outside of that Sounding Miracle is going to be relatively easy. I mean, the biggest thing is getting to like stage four. You don't have to go too, too crazy. Phase three in your characters is at most the minimum requirement for that team, which is why I'm also isolating this because you don't have all the stamina in the world to just do everything in a crazy abundance uh, because they did make it in terms of difficulty wise a lot easier for you to be able to clear story. So what you're going to be doing here is that it is a mission that requires you to get to the point of clearing stage five. So you'll do that for one, but for everything else, at least get into stage four should be able to grant you enough, um, considering you also will be granted missions as well for completing corresponding stages to then gain extra waves, which should allow you to be able to fill out the remainder of your team, right? Um, so that's kind of your baseline there. And then Sonic Rift, uh, currently Sonic Rift, the one I am able to farm is six, seven and eight. It is gonna require you to have a little bit of a stronger team um and more in an aoe sense uh just because of the fact it's going to be turns that are going to be stipulating the fight not so much your unit is dying so if you don't clear in enough turns then you're not able to also do the blitz um you could multi-battle it but again i would say staying far away from multi-battling or even blitzing this as much as you can you might do it here and there, but this is not going to be the primary source of your EXP. Um, it's going to be an aspect of it, uh, considering that we are still in the works of trying to get this fixed and just overall giving more of an accommodation for where players might be, right? So that's pretty much that in terms of your extrusions. Now, the other thing that's going to be very important, and I touched on this in the last video, but for the beginner's guide, this is going to be super crucial. If there's any event that started or going on while you're farming, um, with the way that they have the event set up now, you're going to be able to do all of the event without having to worry about your account being at the corresponding level. Now, I want to show you guys my shop, okay? My shop looks like this. 
And this was never the case. Even for in-game players, we had to do an insane amount of runs for us to be able to remotely clear out the shop. And when I say the story nodes give you a crap ton of resources, they give you, a, or the event nodes give you a crap ton of resources, they give you like a crap ton there. Also, the shop is super easy to clear. I do not think we've had any any events that have been this easy to clear. I um, mean, even down to the next part, I already have cleared this shop out, uh, and this is within a day. Now, this is good because, again, you are going to still have attribute aspects of the event that's still going to be necessary. There's about 10 million gold that is in the event collectively. Um, and as you are spending stamina, you're still going to be collecting these tickets, which you'll then come in here and turn in for gold. Uh, and this is going to be newer players' main source of gold. Um, and I also want to touch on that too because the idea from like a in-game player we need crap tons of gold to be able to flesh out our six star pieces whereas for where a beginner is going to be they're not going to need not even a fraction of what the gold is required for them to be able to effectively build up their gear at least starting out okay i would say that at least starting out so if we go and we take a look here and this is where i want to kind of touch on the aspects of gear Right now with gear, this is going to be another very, very important fo uh, focal point on your account. Now, like I said before, I actually had pushed all the way through easy. Um, that's where you'll see your first four star set. OK, um, now with that, that's going to be and this is kind of my I, I would say suggestion when it comes down to gear. If it is a reciprocated level, um, they do not allow you to over invest into them. So you leveling them up is actually not hurting you. Um, because to be quite honest, you can't go any higher. There's no way to over invest. And honestly, these would be about the average, I would say like pluses that you would go or enhancements you would do if you were looking at these specific pieces prior to the update. Now, the thing is, is that you obviously are going to see a lot better in terms of quality of the relics, the higher the, um, the level is but for the ones that are of lower levels it is important to understand that yes flat stats all of that crap is important because your characters really aren't going to have the best gear of accessible to them so just those cushion stats are going to be really nice and then on top of that, also having these set effects are going to be more important because then you'll be able to either get that bonus of attack or that lifesteal or the counterattack chance. Those are going to be really, really important. Now, to kind of look at the baseline of where my gear is, I'm looking at about level 25 to 30 pieces on all of my characters, just about still some 20s in here. Um, but really, honestly, nothing too crazy in terms of gear. And I'm already fighting level 60 units in the easy mode. I um, mean, even in the hard mode, like characters are like level 51 and i also think purgatory they're around the same level as well so all of my units that i decided to pick up and invest in they all have this quality of gear um like i said the other determinant factors that makes it a little bit easier is the resignations on some of my dps um, and even some of my uh, supports like my Changpu is also completely finished. That's extra base stats that, again, if you were looking at a four star or five star, would take you significantly longer and you're kind of relying a little bit more on RNG aspects for you to be able to have that said thing. Now, like I mentioned before, the main thing with Ascension, Ascension 3, is all you really need starting out. You do not need to go any deeper or any crazier than that, just to kind of give yourself a baseline there. Now, the next thing we're gonna be taking a look at is going to be your um, Infinite Miracle, okay? Uh, so the Infinite Miracle is actually going to be another aspect that you're going to have to like really take into consideration because it is a part of your courses. Uh, with the Infinite Miracle, it's not super out of the way. Um, you might have to do some aspects of it manually but units are three star level 30 um which i would say they're actually pretty much on par in comparison to story uh these units are like just about on par with you so you are going to have to kind of play a little bit into strategy and things of that nature uh so that you're able to be able to get through this right now outside of that I would say the only other thing that you want to make sure you're doing is the cube miracle uh, because what you're going to be working towards at this point and let's actually go to the shop for the cube miracle is getting death guard by so death guard by is going to be super huge for the grouping or the i would say kind of the leveling up of death guard hey um, considering that this unit is going to be the corresponding counterpart to be able to doubling your attacks etc etc uh, extremely valuable for pv 
PvE stages later on, and then of course going to be really nice to have for Kronos. Um, the other things that's going to be high in value for you to also be picking up in the cube shop after you get your ripples for that week is going to be your rare Abilamon. Considering that you are going to be working on as many three stars as you're going to be working on, you want to try to get those cooldowns on like your Chang Pu, on your Freddy. Uh, Drew probably would be one of the only ones that I would say that off rip. If you were smart with your Abilamons, he should already have had all his skill downs already done. Uh, so you should be at that point just focusing the ones that are in the cube shop. Um, and you'll be doing a little bit of PvP. I will say the one thing that might kind of sort of be an issue for certain players, especially starting out, and which is why I'm not really advising to go too crazy, is that as you're pushing up, um, you're going to have to face some of the pre-updated uh, accounts that have just been sitting there. Uh, and they are definitely going to be a lot stronger if some of those accounts have like five star units on them or if they have six star pieces of gear. So that is one thing that you are going to have to be aware of. So do what you can to farm points, but don't go too crazy with trying to scale right away. You really want to try to build up your account as much as you can and collecting the points with just the aspect in mind of getting the resources out of here legendary abilamon donar ripples obviously you want to get those it's two a week at only at 100 so you definitely want to grab those um and then of course epic abilamons are going to be really really nice as well for you to also snag uh club shop you will join a club if you can get your for bryce out of here he's a decent unit to pick up um but definitely with everything else um you're still going to have to be working towards level 40 and level 50 account ranks so everything else is just pretty grab it as you see fit um for saving either currency or for the investment of your units, which you really don't have to go too crazy with that. Um, but everything else within the shop, gold shop wise, I really wouldn't advise buying anything at this point. The gold shop will get a lot better the deeper you get into the game. But even at that point, um, you probably still wouldn't really be buying at that corresponding par uh, part to where it's matching you because you will more than likely already have a lot better things. But if you end up seeing something in here that is of value and worth of value, uh, then you might want to snag it. But everything that's in here right now, absolutely do not grab this crap, right? Now, moving on to the last aspect of this video, which I wanted to cover in the beginner's guide especially is the team comps that you want to utilize to at least get to the point of clearing the ritual miracles uh and what i would advise you to at least keep in mind when gearing these units etc etc right so for at least getting to stage five of the chronos you want to utilize whoever is your uh beginner unit that you get five star that you get um which i'm using uh tang Shuang. he does have the defense break it's not bad he's able to also heal himself with the set app so it absolutely works uh using death guard hey drew q and chang pu for sustain to prevent any ccing and also in between when chronos defense breaks you because uh his little wave attack now will defense break you so that is just absolutely annoying to deal with so this would be the layout that you would want to consider um again the gear is going to just be super super baseline uh when you're talking about like haiti said it's going to be whatever you're using in pve for these units um same thing war machine the sort of uh, or uh, fiery and cadence is going going to be uh, again for your other portions of your dps uh and then for your supports either the abiding panacea uh, and i have a broken set on my changpu because i'm trying to get that last piece for immunity um and then the adamant time you can also get through playing the game and then wind walker is another set that you'll see on some of your characters but not really so much yet but eventually you will start fleshing that out right now with a pep a pep five is going to be pretty much the same exact lineup but you take out death guard hey and you put in freddy all right freddy is going to be your unit that you place in here and the reason why you do is because he hits a lot less you want to take off the monas you don't want to use mona here you'll probably use her in the first like first clears because it was a lot easier but eventually you'll start noticing that the poison and trying to deal with that with in conjunctions the you know uh turns and stuff that a pep will take it's going to be a little bit too much even at that at this point in the game for you to be taking on that extra damage um so you're trying to condense your damage you have a defense break you have uh, damage link so that can help you with your tablet mission clear so this is really really good and then of course champu is absolutely amazing because of her immunity coverage so it prevents you from being poisoned um so absolutely huge there uh and then for fafnir i would say with fafnir 
you don't have to go too too crazy uh but the team comp that i would say obviously you're going to want to recommend is any team comp that has a decent amount of units that can multi-hit so if you have units like um for example like death guard hay is going to work extremely well here because death guard hay is able to also multi-hit on two i think all three abilities actually um with the sustain you can bring chang pu just to prevent the uh cc freeze from happening to the remainder of your team or the sun um and then of course you can still bring like the damage link for killing tablet early you don't have to really utilize that too much right now but then again you also are going to also be getting damage coming from uh whoever your captain is so if you're using like uh, another alternative unit that you might get earlier if you're lucky is like Dai, you could definitely swap him in but just trying to consolidate and condense the usage of all the units this is what i would say would work just to kind of get you to at least stage five um as we're working towards pushing to stage 10 right so that's pretty much that um again i will say the game has gotten a lot easier in certain aspects but a lot harder in others but this is just a really good baseline just to kind of help you with getting through this current version and update of what is going to take and what is required for you to be able to get through the game uh levels don't have to be too high um my levels on my units my highest unit is level 40 right everybody else is 35 and lower so we're not even going crazy with levels um star rarity four star average one five Five star that's a nat five star that we're using so you do not even have to go crazy with even star rarity in your characters right so that's pretty much going to be that for this video let me know if this helped guys appreciate you guys for tuning in and we're going to continue the series in the saga um and also guys if you are watching this and you want to partake in the summons uh for the new unit yun chun that is on banner definitely definitely make sure you sign up i will have that linked in the discord if you want to sign up for that and then we're going to probably end up having a massive massive live stream for account reviews okay so we're going to be doing account reviews a little bit different i will be posting those details on my community tab and in the discord because i know there's a lot of you guys that are probably going to sign up um and we're going to be doing some condensed numbers there uh so if anyone wants to sign up for that i'll leave that open for a time window uh but then and everything else um you know we'll just have to kind of get there when we get there right but that's pretty much going to be that let me know what you guys think and i'll catch you guys in the next one